Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we'll be continuing our mod highlight series with a mod which is going to change your experience with Clan Angrund, Dwarfs of Karak Eight Peaks. This mod itself is currently a work in progress, currently in version 1.1, and there are a few things planned for version 1.2, but as it stands, it introduces a plethora of new units, some new mechanics, legendary lords, and basic heroes. I've mentioned in the past that Clan Angrand itself is, well, not very fun, and unfortunately, even with the dwarf rework that we officially received what seems like ages ago, Clan Angrand was seemingly left out from it. Before we begin, you will have noticed that the faction name of Clan Angrand has been changed to Vala Azril Ongol, which translates to Queen of the Silver Depths. This is the original true lore friendly name of Kadak Eight Peaks. I figured I should let you guys know as there might be a bit of confusion due to the faction name. But with that being said, let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Your campaign will begin as normal. The only difference is that you have obviously a new banner and your faction name has changed. So, those who are used to the typical vanilla Clan Angrin playthroughs won't have any issues here as everything is as usual. Interestingly enough, Belagar, barring a reskinned model, has had no changes to his skills. I was expecting at least something different. Though it could be assumed, as the modder is working on a variety of different things for this mod, that eventually he'll have a new set of skills. Something like that is desperately needed, as obviously Creative Assembly have not updated him as of yet. The changes will start to become more noticeable as you enter the Construction tab. You see here, you'll have a variety of new buildings and new units to boot. All the new units implemented by this mod can only be recruited through these buildings. There are a decent amount of units which will form more or less a complete roster. Though I do think that too many buildings have been added in, and they could have been incorporated through the vanilla ones too. I'm not trying to complain, it's more of the fact if you have two complete rosters, in my opinion, it can be a bit daunting. Yes, it's only three extra buildings, not counting landmarks of course, but it can be a bit much. Though with that being said, some of the baseline buildings, like for example where you will recruit your basic warriors from, can be completely omitted from your settlements, as you will have access to warriors that are specific from this mod, which more or less perform in the same way as expected. I do suggest mixing and matching though, I'm not sure if the baseline dwarf stuff will be removed eventually, but so far you might as well make your armies as strong as possible. The forge mechanic has also been updated through this mod, including a new tab, the Doomstone Items. These are particularly powerful items, which not only require oaf gold and sometimes some certain trade items, but also Doomstones. This is a new resource, and you can find it by simply clicking on the Doomstone you wish to acquire. It will then take you to the location of a nearest Doomstone to your camps. I know a lot of people aren't too keen on these trade resources, but the inclusion of Doomstones, especially for these powerful items, will make you want to actually travel across the world, which will at least mean that you'll have to start fighting other races and factions, which you might not even fight until late game, or they might just get defeated before you even get to them. This mod currently introduces two new legendary lords, each with their own faction effects, skill trees and so on. First and foremost, let's check out Fulgrim Brighthope, who is stylized as Belagar's son. Campaign and battle effects show that Fulgrim boosts up the capabilities and reduces the upkeep for the units uniquely added through this mod. He's quite powerful stat-wise too, with a very high armor count and decently high melee attack. A bunch of unique skills have been added for this lord. The skills will vary tremendously, where you can focus around upgrading your settlements economically, boosting up your warriors, 
or turning Thorgrim himself into a melee powerhouse who specializes in fighting specific enemies. This mod presents a massive amount of options for this character specifically, so if I were you, think about what you want before starting to dedicate yourself to any specific trees. The second legendary character introduced for this mod is Duragar Hammerfist, a character which dramatically reduces the upkeep of certain units by 30% to be exact, not just stuff added in by the mod but also artillery. This can be an absolute powerhouse. The character also has two specific trees which focus around basic administration of your settlements or focusing around buffing up your army against the forces of chaos. There are also some non-branch skills which allow you to reduce the upkeep for certain units once again. You can have a full army of very little cost warriors to maintain, which might be a tad much, though this is only for one basic force. Lastly, you will also be introduced to a new hero character, the Shadow Hunter. Decent in terms of stats, mostly focused around ranged combat. You'll notice here there's not a lot of battle and campaign effects, just the vigor loss reduction. However, there is a lot of things added through this character, some of them which could be considered quite broken. So, you've got access to the basic stuff as you can imagine, and then some new skills. Stuff like upkeep reduction, increasing fighting capabilities, and even summons for certain dragons which you'll see later on in this video. My one big glaring issue here though, is that these heroes can reduce upkeep of certain types of units by 80%, which yeah, that can be absolutely massive. As a support character, with the other skills in mind, everything works well, but the upkeep reduction can be a tad much. Now what we'll be showing on screen are all the different units uniquely added through this mod. I'll be going through them at a decent pace whilst also talking about my general thoughts through my playthrough, and you can see each unit's respective stats as I go through them, but do pause if you need to just in case I'm going too quick. The units added in are quite cool, but before anything we're going to talk about those which might seem a bit out of place. So there are some mercenary units added in, which yeah, they might not seem like a part of a dwarf roster, and in truth they're not, but I think it adds in a bit of flavour. A bit of cavalry, both flying and grounded, just to give the dwarves a little bit of an extra edge, which is why I think eventually the baseline vanilla units, or at least a decent chunk of them, might be removed in the future, as there's new units being added in to change the playstyle for this faction. Again, I've not spoken to the modder, however, that's the feeling I'm getting, especially since more legendary lords and mechanics are being planned out. The dragons themselves, which you saw at the beginning of this clip, are interesting. Yeah, they actually can be recruited by dwarfs in terms of Warhammer Fantasy battles. The models themselves might need a bit of extra work to make them look better, but other than that, it's quite thematic and to be honest, I don't really see these dragons ever being implemented, so it's nice to see them brought to life with a mod. Now, in general terms for the dwarf units, they look cool. Everything has its own stylistic look, which, yeah, when it's mostly kit bashed is kinda hard to do, but the colouring of the units are nice and battle-wise they perform rather well. They might be a bit too strong in certain cases, but other than that, everything feels like what you expect from a different dwarf faction. The mod is still a work in progress, as I've stated before, and the modder has stated that more stuff such as new legendary lords, mechanics, and so on are due to be released. But there are a few things in this mod which needs a little bit of work as it is, for example, the Shadow Hunters. The massive reduction to upkeep is incredibly brutal. Yes, this can be beneficial to you early on, as obviously you do have the negative upkeep that normally plagues Clan Angrand until you capture Karak 8 Peaks. The big issue here though is that after that negative is gone, you're pretty much running units at 20% of their original upkeep. Stacking this can mean that you can basically run high tierish armies at no upkeep cost whatsoever. 
balance wise that's a bit overpowered and I think that's my main issue with this mod in all honesty. There are some minor things like for example Belagar himself, the faction leader and the king without a hold not having any special unique skills. But I imagine since he's had a reskin it's more than likely we'll see this being changed soon enough. Unless the modder forgets about him like Creative Assembly did. Yeah, kinda awkward. But with that being said, if you'd like to try out this mod for yourself, and I do suggest it if you're going to have a Clan Angren playthrough, you can find the link directly in the description below. And finally, if there are any other mods that you'd like to see potentially showcased on this channel, you can always suggest it in the comments below. Or might I also suggest joining the Great Book of Grudges official Discord, which is also linked in the description below, as it's much easier to get in contact with me. But with that my friends we've come to the end of our video, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products not just Warhammer for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends thank you so much for watching once again and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.